Hello. Over the next 10 minutes, I want to talk about um, how to maintain your sense of perspective when you deal with smaller forms. Um, <clears throat> last episode, or you know, previous episodes, dealt with the problem of regaining your sense of perspective when you stare at a flat piece of paper by the act of placing landmarks. Landmarks, which were bits of markings on the page that provided information for your brain to help convince you that you were in fact looking at a three-dimensional image that you could actually see things that went off you know into space actually I think the horizon line will probably be about there why do I know that because these lines reach a vanishing point that lies on the horizon um, but then the problem occurs that when you draw a person There are there are some things that go on when you when you deal with drawing a person and yes it's all fine and good to be able to get something that is generalized is a very generalized shape it is you know relatively three dimensional but then the problem is when you start to when you're you know, done your generalized shape, when you start to zoom in and you start dealing with individual lines, that everything begins to flatten out again. Suddenly this looks like a big, you know, round circle. Um, how to maintain that sense of depth and perspective, you know, how to avoid things from getting flat again, how to retain, you know, what our, our natural sense. So one of these things I, I'd like to show you is landmarking not just you know over over the entire picture but when you start zooming in on things that you will have to have landmarks on your form for instance that little x the x is a very very powerful landmark an x is something that in dead center is going to be very even but as you get closer to the side of the shape It's going to flatten out. It's like this. You have an X. You look at it like that. It's very even. But as the X begins to tilt, you know, as it goes over the surface, it begins to flatten out. All right. So you have to be able to make sure that your X is do that. You have to. That is the general trend. That is the, the 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 correlation between a point on the surface and the X that is created. Everything will begin to flatten out. And so when you take a an object like this, like a like a sphere, you can see how this affects you know, any of the shapes that you draw on there. If I have, yeah, if I have the letter A, A is for apple, then the A is going to wind up getting squished. In fact, it's not just going to get squished, it's going to, it's going to start to adopt the contour of the ball. So when you deal with something like, say, uh, how do I clear this? Clear. Okay, so if you wanted to deal with, some, say, you know, irregularly shaped forms, or let's say a body shape, let's say we've got something like that. Uh, okay, so you have yourself a body shape, then you're going to have to do the same thing. You're going to have to there, there's an X right there. I can, I can put crosses on the body forms. So this is another exercise that you can do. And you see how much more the crosses begin to get squished up. All right. Now the other thing, another exercise I'm going to show you is the actual 
circular outline of this. People have trouble drawing circles or in, in perspective. Um, the circle turns into an ellipse whenever it turns. And the other thing about the circle is that it maintains a minimum diameter. It maintains a minimum width as it turns. Of course, that's going to change depending on how far or how close it is. Okay, But the exercise I'm going to give you is to draw a series of circles that pass through space. It's as if you were to drill a hole through the center of this and string a wire through it. Okay, If you had a flexible wire or, or a rigid wire that was bent and you ran this along the rail of the wire, it has to travel like that. What you want to avoid is any side slipping movement. You don't want it to, to side slip. Okay, you want it to travel along the rail. So I will show you an example of this exercise. Uh, here we are. Edit clear. Okay. Oh, no wonder why my keyboard is unplugged. Silly thing. Ah, there we go. Okay, so this exercise, you've got your hole punch through there. And if you want, you can you can draw And as you're doing this, you know, I'm basically just, I've, I've drawn, you know, the wire. And I've chosen a few points along the, the wire to draw this jar lid. One of the things about the jar lid that you're going to have to get used to is that the tilting doesn't just occur in one angle. Tilting can occur in diagonals. You can tilt at, you know, this this tilting, there's no, there's no limit to the axes which this thing can be tilted. So the way you do it is you have to main, make sure that you're always maintaining that certain minimum width, you know, no matter which angle that's the axis, you know, you've got the axis of the tilt. So keep in mind, you know, what's, what is the axis of the tilt? And you squish the circle along the axis of the tilt. Now mind you, just because it's like this, it can still be up close and be further away. So, that said, you'll find that the axis of the tilt is always at a 90 degree it's at a 90 degree to the path it's perpendicular and so it is squished in this axis And if it helps you, you can indicate the x. So that's that's a wrap.